The pain is distressing, but it's also essential. The body's way of alerting us to internal damage. As the pain grows, Lisa instinctively rubs her arm as close to the injury as she can bear. This rubbing releases another wave of pain-blocking chemicals. But they're milder than endorphins, too mild to counter the frantic pain signals coming from a broken bone. Lisa has done severe damage to her body, but already it is showing signs of its remarkable ability to heal itself. On her hand, the task is to stop blood from pouring from tiny severed vessels. Specialist blood cells called platelets change their shape as they come into contact with damaged flesh. They turn into tiny spheres which lock together and plug the wound. At the same time, invisible proteins in her blood solidify into strands of a substance called fibrin. A net of fibrin is thrown across the wound, trapping the blood cells beneath. Now the fibrin net contracts, squeezing liquid out of the clot like water out of a sponge. And as the clot shrinks, it pulls the skin together, closing the wound. One quick blast of water and the body's careful repair is washed away. But once Lisa's wound is cleaned, it's hurting. It will start to heal again as swiftly as before. Lisa's surface wound has been treated, but no one knows the extent of the injury beneath her skin. Yet without waiting for the doctor, her damaged arm is summoning help from her own body. The battered tissues around the fracture send out chemical signals which make her arm swell to double its normal size. The swelling is caused by blood vessels in her arm dilating. Fluid passes from the blood into the surrounding tissue, flooding the fracture site with oxygen and other nutrients. The chemicals which trigger swelling also cause the pain nerves in her arm to become more sensitive. The slightest pressure has them firing off pain signals to her brain. Her pain threshold is now so low she can even feel the blood pulsing through her swollen vessels, a throbbing ache. But once again, pain has a purpose. It protects Lisa's arm by making sure she does nothing to aggravate the injury. It's an hour and a half after the accident before the doctor is able to take a look beneath Lisa's skin. Hey, you keep nice and still like that now. Already, things have begun to change. Just as on the surface of her hand, blood is clotting inside her fractured bone. But so many blood vessels have been severed that it will take another half an hour for the flow of blood into the break to completely stop. The result will be a huge blood clot enveloping the entire fracture, a hematoma. I'm afraid you've broken your arm just across there. That must have been a spectacular fall. What bone have I broken? Look, there's two bones there. There's, there's the very little the, the doctors can do for Lisa. The, 
that can set her arm in plaster, but her self-healing processes must do the rest. In a few weeks, it'll be as right as rain. Once the hematoma around the fracture is fully formed, her body will perform a miracle and transform this massive clot from blood to bone. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't find the knives and forks anywhere. Mm, wait till I see those girls again. It wasn't their fault, you know, Mum. Excuse me, kids. Lisa's body is faced with a massive repair job. To mend the broken bone in her arm, she needs thousands of bone-building cells, and quickly. Inhabiting the spaces deep inside her bones are specialist cells called stem cells, responsible for replacing dead and damaged tissue. Stem cells are factories making new cells. Usually, they divide to create a new cell once every two days. Now, to form an army of bone-building osteoblasts, they divide once every three minutes. And it doesn't sound as if they were being very friendly to me, Lisa. You just don't understand kids these days, do you, Dad? Uh. That bit goes there. Eight hours after the accident, and the bone builders are inside the hematoma. The minerals they release encase the clotted blood cells in tough bone. Outside the clot, more osteoblasts are working. The transformation from blood into bone is underway. Lisa's body is doing what no machine can ever do. It is repairing itself. Repair work is going on all over Lisa's body. On her knee, blood from tiny vessels, severed when she hit the ground, has been trapped inside her skin. As the iron-based pigment, which makes blood red, is gradually broken down chemically, the blood changes color through all the rainbow hues of a bruise. In the space of just five days, her body clears the blood away completely. Well, we're planning on putting in a new kitchen, but apart from that, everything's fine, really. Less than a so. week after the accident, the clot on Lisa's hand has dried to become an irresistibly itchy scab. One minute. Lisa, don't, don't pick. Thank you. Hi. No, it's fine. Well, maybe next week. New skin is growing fast around the scab. A millimeter beneath the surface, Stem cells are dividing to create new skin cells. The new cells are pushed up to replace the damaged skin above. Lisa's scab begins to loosen and is easier to pull off. No, 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 it's fine. Baby. I'll get it. No, no, it's fine. My mom said I should bring these for you. Thanks. Wow, is it broken? The two broken ends of Lisa's bone are steadily bonding together. Her cast protects the injury, but it's designed not to restrict the movement of the bones completely. As she flexes her fingers, the two ends of the break shift gently in relation to each other. This movement generates tiny electric currents which seem to invigorate the work of the bone builders. Movement is actually helping to fix Lisa's broken bone. What are you doing? Oh, my finger exercises. I've never lived in the country. 